the Lord. God bless you. Welcome back to the garden where new life begins. It is always a privilege and an honor to be here and to share the word of the Lord with God's people. I do have a word for you today, and I pray that it will bless you and help you. I'm so glad that you have decided to join us today to hear what thus saith the Lord. So we're going to go right into a word of prayer and ask God's blessings and anointing on you. Ask his blessings and anointing on this word that shall come forth today. Gracious Heavenly Father, in your precious name, Jesus, we thank you right now for all that you've done, for all that you shall do. We thank you for your people. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your sovereignty over our lives. We acknowledge who you are the God of the universe, your creator of everything. And we're so glad, dear God, that you are the lover of our souls. We ask God that you would bless this day, that you would bless everyone that is tuned into this broadcast, that you would give them revelation on what they should hear today. Lord, we know it's not an accident that they have tuned in today and that you have a word for them. We pray, God, that you would give them revelation and let them hear what thus saith the Spirit to their souls and we ask God that you would open doors that have been shut shut doors that need to be closed make a way dear God out of the darkness encourage somebody's heart help your children dear God to stand strong in these last days to give you glory my God in Jesus name we ask and we pray amen and amen amen so we're going to go into the word of the Lord today I have a word that I believe will bless you. I believe God has intended for you to hear this today. Amen. So we're going to go to the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse number one. And I will read in your hearing verse number one through number three is where we shall take our scripture text today. Amen. Isaiah chapter 30, verse number one. If you have your Bible there with you, please feel free to read along with me where you are. It's always good to read the word of God for yourself as well as hear the word of the Lord. Amen. So verse number one says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Verse number two says that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth. This uh, word Egypt here is a metaphor for the world. It is speaking of those that decide to turn back or to go back, to go into the world, to go where they have come from after God has delivered them. And they have not counseled God and asked God's uh, advice on what they should do and how they should do. But they just decided on their own that they're going to go back to the land of Egypt. It goes on to say that to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. This term here, Pharaoh, is not necessarily talking about a person or an individual in authority, but it's talking about a system. When it's talking about you going back to the world, then you are allowing yourself to be in a position where you trust into the, trust the strength of the system of the world. Instead of relying on God's ability, you go back to what is familiar with you, you go back to what is comfortable to you, and you rely and trust in that system to strengthen you and help you through. And so God is saying that these rebellious children, uh, they go back to where they came from because it is familiar to them, because it is comfortable to them. Instead of trying to fight the fight of faith, they give up and go back without consulting God and asking God to help them or give them any strength at all. Verse number three says, therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame. And the trust in the shadow of uh, Egypt, your confusion. And we'll talk about that a little later on in this message. So to clear, uh, to get a clear rather understanding 
of why God began uh, verse number one with the words, woe to the rebellious children. We need to read the last few verses of chapter number 29. We're going to go back to chapter number 29, and I'm going to read in your hearing starting with verse number 17, and we'll work our way back up to chapter 30, verse number 1, and get a better understanding of why he opened up chapter 30, verse number 1, with those words, woe to the rebellious children. Uh, verse number 17 says this. It says, is it not yet a very little while and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord, and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. I hope you allow me uh, this morning a little latitude to speak with you and to talk with you instead of yell at you. I want to make sure that you have a good understanding and hearing of the word that God has put in my heart for you today. Uh, after we read chapter uh, verses number 17 through 18, God here is referring to a time of restoration. He is re referencing rather a time when he shall restore everything to its rightful place. He is saying here that it is not, uh, is it not a little while and Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. And the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. He's saying that the time is going to come where I'm going to restore your desert and make it an oasis. The time is going to come when I'm going to take your dry place and I'm going to make it water. I'm going to put trees. I'm going to put birds. I'm going to make it flourish because it's time for me to put things back in place, saith the Lord. The Lord is saying that the time is coming where uh, not only am I going to establish things as they should be, but God said that the deaf will hear the words of the book. Uh, he is saying that the eyes of the blind uh, shall, shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. And the meek shall increase in their joy, saith the Lord. Everything that was uh, wrong is going to be made right. Uh, everything that was turned topsy-turvy is going to be put right side up. It's going to be a time where things will be replaced back as they should. When up will really mean up and down will really mean down. It's going to be a time when right is really right and wrong is really wrong. It's, it's going to be a time when God is going to establish himself as he should be and we will be able to look and see what God has intended for us to see even out of our obscurity even though our, our eyes are, are blinded even though they are fogged even though we are not able to see clearly there's going to come a time when God will take the fog away and we'll be able even out of darkness to see clearly through the darkness into God's marvelous light uh, this will be a time when everything that the devil has done will mean absolutely nothing. Uh, every decree that he has made shall be overturned. And every device that he has uh, uh, made shall be destroyed. And every lie that he has told shall be uncovered. And every hidden thing that he has tried to keep from the eyes of God shall be uncovered. Everything that he has hid in your soul, everything that he has hid in your spirit, everything that he has caused you to try to believe that you can keep doing this thing and you can hide this thing and nobody will know. All of this will be revealed not to bring you to shame, but so God can help you understand that he loves you and he wants to restore you back into a right relationship with him. Hallelujah. 
Uh, verse number 20 says, for the terrible one is brought to naught, talking about the devil. He says, after during this time, rather of restoration, when I shall make everything back as it was, when I shall replace everything that was stolen, when I shall change everything that was uh, uh, destroyed, when I shall put back in place everything that was taken down, torn down, taken away from you, God is going to restore it back to you. He says, at this time, the terrible one the terrible one will be brought to naught uh, and and the scorner uh, he will be consumed and, and all that watch for iniquity shall be cut off everybody that scorns you everybody that talked about you everybody that didn't believe you everybody that didn't like you for no good reason all of them will be cut off from you because this is a time of restoration in relationship with God and God is going to make sure that that restoration and that relationship is restored because it is God's will that we walk in him verse number 21 says that make a man an offender for a word now listen this this terrible one that shall be brought to naught and and the scorners that are consumed and and those that watch for iniquity that are cut off he's talking about also men that are offenders for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught this is talking about those people that for no good reason just do evil People are just evil in their spirit because they are consumed by the, the, the negativity of the demonic spirits that run rampant in this world. And they call, they attach them people like, they attach, them, attach themselves rather like leeches on people and cause people to do things that they don't even understand why they're doing. People sometimes just look at you and don't like you for no good reasons. People want to hurt you for no good reason. People kill other people for no good reason. All of this is going to be changed and God is going to bring this to naught. Every work that the devil has done is going to be undone. Every device that the the devil has made is going to be destroyed everything that the devil has tried to bring against you and tried to cause every obstacle that he has put in your way shall be removed God is going to make sure that your path to him is clear and is straight and he will not allow the devil to get in your way at that time he will not allow the devil to hurt you at that time he will not allow the devil to tempt you at that time he will not allow the devil to deceive you at that time he is not going to allow anything to get in the way of your relationship with him in other words every evil deed that a man does for no good reason shall cease God want us to know that that because of this he's going to have a time of refreshing a time of renewal in verse number 22 he says therefore thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob Jacob shall now shall not now be ashamed neither shall his face now wax pale but when he seeth his children the work of mine hands in the midst of him they shall sanctify my name and sanctify the holy one of Jacob and shall fear the God of Israel and they also that er erred in spirit shall come to understanding he is saying that they that erred those that made mistakes see God doesn't toss you away because you made a mistake God doesn't forget about you because you made a mistake God doesn't turn his back on you because you made a mistake God will wait until the right time when you're able to hear, when you're receptive to a word from him. I hope you're receptive to this word right now because God is speaking to you right now in your situation. God is speaking to you right now in your problem. God is speaking to you, speaking to you right now through your storm. He will not turn you away. He will not uh, 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 cast you aside because of the mistake. But he says here that they also who erred in 
and spirit shall come to an understanding. In other words, you shall come to a revelation, understanding that you erred, understanding that you were wrong, understanding that you went the wrong direction and that God now wants you to turn around and come back to him. You will have an understanding. It will be a light turned on in your mind and you will see clearly that, that this was the wrong way, but now God, I know that you are on my side. God, now I know that this was meant for a reason. Now I know that I was going through to make me strong. Now I know that at the end of the tunnel was my victory. Now I know that I had to go through this to receive my blessings. Now I understand, God, it wasn't meant for my hurt. I understand that it wasn't meant for my destruction. I understand, God, that you did it, that you allowed me to go through it, and you never let your hands off of me. You see, God, I thought you had abandoned me. When I was going through the storm, I thought you had abandoned me when I made that mistake. I thought you had abandoned me. I thought you had turned your back on me. It seemed like you weren't there anymore. It seemed like I couldn't feel your presence. It seemed like the spirits of God wasn't talking to me anymore. It seemed like I was walking all alone. But now, God, I understand that you didn't leave me. I understand that you didn't abandon me. I understand that you didn't walk away from me. I understand that you were right there by my side side and that you were helping me through this that you wouldn't let me stop you wouldn't let me give up you wouldn't let me turn around but even though I felt the pain even though I felt the struggle even though I felt the frustration even though I thought it wasn't right that I had to go through this when nobody else would now I understand my God that you did it for a reason and now I see the good in my life now I see the victory in my life now I see the blessings in my life now God I understand hallelujah so it says here that even those that erred in spirit uh, shall come to an understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine and they that murmured, even those that, that sometimes uh, we feel like uh, we don't want to do it that way. Or we we, we want to understand why God uh, makes it so hard or why it seems like the hill is too high. And, and why it seemed like just, just to get around the corner, I have to struggle. Why is it I have to go through? And we murmur against the path that God has put us on. We murmur against the direction that God has sent us in. And But God said that there's going to come a time that that we're going to cease the murmuring God said there's going to come a time where we're going to stop talking and we're going to start listening God said that we're going to learn the doctrine we're going to we're going to get a word and from this this portion of verse number 24 I derive uh, the subject matter for today look at somebody if you if you're near somebody if somebody's around you just just look at them for a moment and tell them we need a word from the Lord Hallelujah, we need a word from the Lord. God here is giving hope by referring to a time of restoration, a time of revelation, a time when grace shall be the prevailing factor in God's relationship with his children. God here is referring to a time when everything is going to be all right, when everything is going to be just as it is supposed to be, when we will understand why we did what we did and went through what we went through and had to suffer what we had to suffer. We would even better understand why God took the time to, to go through it with us and, 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 and take uh, things from us instead of just creating a whole new people from the very beginning when Adam and Eve sinned against him God could have just said you know what I'm not even going to mess with you people I'm going to create me somebody who's going to be obedient but God had long suffering to us because he loved us and because he cared about his creation and instead of destroying us what he did was created a plan for us to receive salvation we're going to understand it better by and by in these words God is trying to 
foster confidence in his children and inspiring them to move forward in him to trust him and to have faith in his abilities and have faith in his promises when he's using the words when he's making the statements in the verses that we just read such as lebanon uh, shall be turned into a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest what he is saying is that the dead and barren places in your life shall blossom and flourish like a tropical forest when God is using the uh, uh, metaphor of Lebanon uh, being turned into a fruitful field and that fruitful field being esteemed as a force, what he is saying is that I will come into your life and I know that you have barren places in your life that seem like they're dead. I, I know you have places in your life that seems like nothing can grow, nothing can flourish, nothing can blossom, but God is saying don't worry about the barren places in your life life. Don't worry about the dark places in your life. Don't worry about those places that you feel are desert and dry. Because what I'm going to do in this time, I'm going to allow your life to, blow, to, to blossom. I'm going to allow your dead places to flourish. I'm, I'm going to allow the barren places of your life to produce fruit. Uh, it's going to be so fruitful, so beautiful, uh, like a tropical forest. Uh, he also says in those verses, he said, the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness God will give you light right in the midst of your darkness uh, he will bring clarity to the blurry things and the uncertainty uncertain things that are in the shadows of your life uh, God will provide you a safe place in your dark place that will take you to the right place. In other words, God said that while you are blind and while you cannot see, I will come and I will take your blindness away and I, I will make things now seem clear. Uh, those times that you will see shadows in the corners of your dark places and you are uncertain about which way you should go and uncertain about the things that you should do. God said, I'm going to come and take that that uncertainty and I'm going to clarify everything for you. No thing, nothing in your life will be blurry anymore. Nothing in your life will be uh, something that you are afraid of. It won't be dark anymore. I'm going to put light in the very dark places in the corners of your life that are dark that light would not shine and, and you could not see your way. Uh, God said that he is going to make a way for you. Hallelujah. He's going to make those dark places light. Uh, I don't shine a light in those dark places. Those places that we've avoided, uh, those places that we've not been able to go into. Uh, God will allow us to go into those dark places because he will shine a light uh, and everything will become clear uh, and we'll be able to go in those dark places and clean it up uh, and have those areas of our lives uh, uh, situated where God can step in and God can do what he needs to do for us and to us and through us so that we will be a blessing not only to ourselves but we'll be a blessing uh, to God's kingdom. We'll be a blessing to God's people will be a blessing to the lost we will be a blessing to everybody that God would have us touch because he have allowed us to clean up our dark spaces hallelujah he has cleared up uh, our blindness and he've allowed us to look and see those things that used to be obscure but now they're clear hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, but more importantly God assures us that the devil will not prevail in the end uh, he says, for the terrible one is brought to naught, and the scorner is consumed, and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. Every evil thing, and every evil device, and everyone that participated in the deployment of that evil in your life shall be brought down, and nothing shall in no wise bother you. God is going to make it possible in that time for you to overcome every single thing and every single person that comes against you 
God is saying that I'm going to exalt you and I'm going to lift you up over your enemies and nobody will be able to touch you because everything that the devil had done will be brought to naught. I am not going to allow the devices to work anymore against you. Uh, I'm going to make sure everything is destroyed. Every obstacle is removed. Everything that the devil done is brought to naught. Now in our scripture text, we can understand that when we look at how God is going to bless uh, his people and even those that have erred in their ways, God is going to allow them to hear the book. And even those that, that are murmuring and complaining, God is going to allow them to learn uh, of, of the scripture of the text. And even those who are murmuring and complaining, God is going to allow them to learn doctrine. He is going to give them a word. We have to understand that in this day and time, we need to hear a word from the Lord. We need to hear from God. This is why in chapter 30, verse number one, that he is saying, woe to the children uh, that are rebelling, or woe to the rebellious children. Because after he explained the blessings of the season, and that is coming in, ch in chapter 29 verses 17 through uh, 24 yes. now in our scripture text we can understand that God is saying now that I have given you a glimpse of of what is to come woe unto you if you reject it and this is why he was saying woe to the rebellious children because these are children in verse number one chapter 30 that are rebellious regardless of what they have seen regardless of what God has done for them regardless of what God has said they still have a rebellious heart now, he says that they take counsel but not of me these rebellious people are those that will listen and they will take counsel but they would not take counsel from the Lord they would not take counsel from the house of God. They would not take counsel from the man of God, but they would take counsel from the system of the world. They would take counsel from people that are, are influenced by the adversary. They would take counsel from everybody and everything but God. God said, you are rebellious. You are rebellious in your spirit because you will not take counsel of me. He said that they will cover themselves, but the covering is not from the spirit of God. In other words, they will take allow someone else. They will will connect themselves or attach themselves with someone that is not uh, connected or attached to God. So the covering that they have over their lives is not from the spirit of God. The covering that they have over their lives is from some system in the world that they are comfortable with that they choose to, to allow to cover them in spite of what God has done for them in their lives. These rebellious children are not those who do not know God. These are not the ones who have not experienced the blessings of God. These are not the ones who have not experienced the presence of God. These are those that God has helped. These are those that God has blessed. These are those that God has touched. These are those that God has extended his grace unto. Uh, but in spite of all that God has done for them, they decided that they wanted to be rebellious anyway. Uh, but the only thing that's going to correct their rebellion, the only thing that's going to help their mind, uh, the only thing that's going to deliver them from that rebellious spirit uh, is a word from the Lord uh, because God knows that if we'll take time to hear God's word uh, if we'll take time to listen to a spirit uh, God is able to speak into the depths of your soul uh, God is able to give you a word uh, that will fix your situation uh, 
Too many times what we do is allow ourselves to listen to everybody else around us. We listen to what everybody else is saying and everybody else is telling us because they tickle our fancy, because they say the things that we want to hear. But when the word of the Lord comes and tells us something that's going to help us, and tells us something that's going to fix us, tells us something that's going to make us strong, tells us something that's going to help us endure the situation, tells us something that's going to help us find shelter in the storm, tells us something that's going to be a benefit to somebody else. When the word of the Lord comes and answers our prayer, the prayer that we've been praying for a long time, we seem to ignore that word because it didn't come the way that we wanted it to come. It didn't say what we wanted it to say. We wanted to be blessed because we wanted to be blessed by having a million dollars, but God sent us $500 because it'll take care of the current situation. But he knows that we don't realize that if we take the $500 and keep on walking in the presence of God, and God will bless us with great things because we've been faithful with small things. But because the word of God didn't come from the person that we wanted it to come from, because it didn't come from the house that we wanted it to come from, because it didn't come the way that we wanted it to come from, I'm only going to hear the word from John. I'm only going to hear the word from Jane. I'm only going to hear the word from Sue. I'm only going to hear the word from Bill. But God said, I'm going to send the word through a donkey. God said, I'm going to send the word through a, 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 a bird. He said, I'm going to send the word in a, a way that you're not going to expect it. But what you got to do is understand that however the word of God comes, you got to take that word and you got to move on that word. You got to allow God to touch you in the name of Jesus. We need a word from the Lord. You need a word from the Lord. In this day and time, the only thing that's going to help us is a word from the Lord. We need to listen. Stop. Look and listen for a word from the Lord so God can bless us and help us so that we can be strong and be kept. God wants to help you through every situation and through every problem. And he does have a word for you. He does have something that's going to help you. He does have something that's going to keep you. God bless you and God keep you today. I pray that you will be attentive to the voice of the Lord. I pray that you will listen for a word from the Lord as he speaks into your situation, speaks into your life and blesses you with all the blessings that is meant for you, that he has purpose for you. God loves you. God will never leave you nor forsake you. And he does have a word from you. We need a word from the Lord. God bless you and God keep you. Always remember there's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. We love you right here at the Garden.